welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to Monday, everyone. Hopefully you are enjoying a wonderful long weekend for many of you guys in the States. I know not everyone has that opportunity, and certainly if you don't live in the United States, that's probably not the case. Otherwise, this is Monday, and it's going to be a great week. Why? You're here. You're trying to learn, and you're trying to figure out how to live your best life. I'm assuming that's why most people are tuning in to The Simple Sophisticate. And on that theme is today's episode titled, Why Not Become Self-Actualized? We're going to get into the psychology of what living one's best life really is, finding or discovering one's true potential. And today's post, self-actualization, is what we're going to dive into, a post, I should say, episode, right? And it all began a couple months ago when I heard the quote at the end of a film I highly recommend you watch called A Five Star Life. It is a film in Italian. So if you don't know Italian, which I do not know Italian, you need to read the subtitles, but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Let me read to you the quote, and then we'll dive into this idea of what self-actualization is what the benefits are, and how to then become or to realize or determine, I should say, if you are self-actualized. And I have a feeling many of you already are. And since it's a dynamic way of being, it's something we can always fine tune and improve. So here's the quote that got me started. (laughs) Quote, Did it meet your expectations, even if you have felt at times uncomfortable or lonely? You're still in time to choose, in the future, a more comfortable and protected solution, maybe more suitable to the needs of a family. It is well to keep in mind, however, the happiness and well-being and strictly personal concepts for some people, the sense of freedom and adventure is an essential part of the experience. Trust your instinct. This is your journey. The route to take is up to you. Have a safe journey. Again, this is the last quote that the film leaves us with. And I will have a link on the show notes today of the film, either for an actual DVD or to stream um, on your television, because I highly recommend it. It's an hour and a half film. It's just delightful. But upon watching this and watching this unending, which is very untraditional for an American, for American to watch, we define many times a happy ending as finding the love of your life, finding that other source in order to make us happy. But this idea that this heroine, and I know I'm kind of ruining it for you, but I'm really not. Watch her journey. It's absolutely lovely how she comes to this decision. It's not going to be what you expect. I have a feeling. And it's something that I will want to watch again and again and again. But the quote above is simply this idea that, that she is discovering that she has discovered that true and most contented happiness for her is to be on her own seeking adventure, seeking adventure. And wherever that adventure leads, whether it's meeting people, having experiences with people, that's where she finds her contentment. And that is when she has that aha moment. This quote is stated by the protagonist that her name is Irene. And I I couldn't help but realize as I was pulling together sources for today's episode for self-actualization that all of a sudden I thought of this film and I was like, oh my gosh, Irene completely epitomizes this idea of what self-actualization looks like. Now, you may be thinking, okay, so in order to be self-actualized, I have to be able to want to live my life alone. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's just what is what it was for her. 
because she was able to learn and become knowledgeable of herself. She was able to be aware of the world around her and then forge her path based on what spoke to her. She was also able to let go of whatever society purported the happy life looked like and move forward through on her path and accept that others may have a different definition and not try to change that within them. That is self-actualization. Abraham Maslow introduced this psychological theory. So we're going to go to Psych 101. If you've, if, you've, if you've taken psychology at all in high school or in college, you no doubt know what I'm about to talk about. And even if you have had that class, this is a great refresher. If you haven't, this is hopefully going to be that foundation of realizing or discovering why I feel uh, something's missing. Or maybe I've gotten to this stage in my life, but gosh, I can't get to that higher stage. How do I do it? Hopefully I will answer those questions for you today. And all of this information is broken down in the show notes so you can print it out. So you can feel free to go there at the, at the blog, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 25. But Maslow back to Maslow. So he created this concept, this theory of self-actualization in the middle of the 20th century. And he shares it in his hierarchy of needs. And there's these five levels of needs and self-actualization is at the top. It's the pinnacle of what he, he is ascribing that we want to get to. We can eventually, all of us can eventually get to it. So that's the good news. All of us are capable of getting there if these other four needs are met. So his definition of self-actualization is this, quote, what a man be, or a woman be, I should say. Uh-huh. Okay, start again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm starting again. What a man be, he must be. It is the desire for self-fulfillment namely to the tendency for him to become actualized in what he is potentially to become everything that one is capable of becoming. So very simply, it's simply to become or to reach your full potential. That's what self-actualization is. That's all it is. That's all it is in the sense that that is pretty, that is a huge concept. But I think if you're listening to this podcast, you are striving to find and to become and to reach that point. I'm very confident in that. And that's really what at the heart of what the Simply Luxurious Life is, is to live your best life, to tap into your talents and to share them with the world. And everyone's is going to be different. The benefits, the benefits, let's look at those first, because that's really the carrot, right? Let's look at the carrot for a second. The benefits of attaining self-actualization are inner peace. When you discover what it is that you want to strive after, that you discover your talents and you continue to work on those and hone them and offer them to the world, you find this tranquil space in your life and you can let go of anxiety and you can let go of any of those fears because you know how to now deal with fear. And it's a much more restful place to be. It's not a place where you are stagnant, but it is a place to realize you know how to move forward. You know how to answer questions. You know how to you know how to master your mind. So number two is this mastery of your own emotions. That's a huge benefit. You're able to determine, I feel this way because, and it's that because part that takes time. And when you get to that point of being able to define why you feel certain ways, you can then address it, deal with it, and move beyond it. Three is that you have an improved physical health. And part of the improved physical health is because you're now mastering your mind. You're reducing unnecessary stress that causes that cortisol and that adrenaline to destroy when it's used, when it's used extensively and too much so to destroy and and weaken immune systems to cause and refuse to let toxins be released. All sorts of things that stress can cause is reduced or eliminated. And so therefore your health can improve. You're then now focusing on what you need to focus on rather than things you shouldn't be focusing on. And you're, you're happy and, and simply feeling happy can have physical effects on your body. Four is you have an improved creativity. Why? Again, you're letting go of unnecessary stress. You have a shelter. You have food on the table. You have a healthy body. You have money in the bank. You don't have to worry about those things. So you're free to think, explore, wander, And then, therefore, you're able to find the creativity that is around us every single day and start connecting the dots for yourself. Five is you have an increased ability to learn new concepts. 
So your academics in school, or if you're learning new skills at work, improves because you're able to. You have energy to do that now. More energy freed up to do that now. Six, you become an inspiration for others. And number seven, because, because you're an inspiration to others and because you're contributing positively to society with this talent that you've discovered, you improve society. You improve society. And you begin to contribute positively, right? So those are the seven benefits, amazing benefits that I think all of us want and are probably feeling to some capacity in different times of our lives. But the question now is, how do we, how do we make that leap to that point of self-actualization, right? First, we must meet those hierarchy of needs that's on Maslow's pyramid, right? And so I will provide a link to, to this graphic, this, this pyramid graphic that you no doubt have seen if you've had Psych 101. But I'm also going to list them here really quickly so you know what I'm talking about. The very, very foundation of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is that our physiological needs are met such as we need to have good nutrition or food and we need to have adequate shelter. We also need to have a body that's physically able to do what we need it to do. So a healthy body, a healthy machine, in other words. And a lot of this stuff does require money, regular money to pay for rent or a mortgage, regular money to provide clothing and food. All right, so the first two needs, I'm gonna talk about the second one in a second, come down to having a steady stream of income. Doesn't have to be massive, has to be enough, has to be just enough. The second need, so the second tier on this pyramid, is that our safety needs are met. We have a home that provides safety and security. We have a consistent level of routine so that we know that we're going to be going home at a certain time, or we know that people are going to be there that are supposed to be there, whether it be our parents, our partner or whoever's in our lives, we have this routine of some regard. Obviously, we're going to be spontaneous at some point, but we can then relax. And so it's this point of creating an environment where we can relax and let down our guard when we come back from the world into our sanctuary. So again, this this requires some money. This requires some regular income of some capacity. So those are the first two needs. Our third need is our social need is met meaning that we have or are part of healthy, comforting, supportive relationships, whether they be at work with our friends, with our lover. And most importantly, we cannot forget this one. We must have a healthy relationship with ourself. So some people are going to be, again, more extroverted and they're going to want to be with a few more people or have more relationships in their friend's circle or at work. You don't have to have, there's not a certain number that everyone has to have. But the key has to be, we have to be in a good relationship with ourselves in order for anything else to go beyond. So that's the third need. The fourth need before we get to the pinnacle of self-actualization is simply our, and most importantly, our self-esteem needs to be met. And this comes down to what we're contributing to the world. It could be in our career choice. It could be with our family if we are raising children. It could be just simply by contributing positively to society, whatever that is, and that's very general, but we have taken the time to hone a skill or a few skills, not a ton of skills. We're not a generalist. We are mastering one or two things so that we can then provide and be productive. We can be a credible expert, a trustworthy expert. We can offer value that maybe you can't get readily somewhere else. Now, self-esteem doesn't need to be given accolades publicly. If it does, great, grand, wonderful. But so long as we know that we are contributing positively, our self-esteem rises. Our self-esteem rises. And that is what the need is for self-esteem. So that's the fourth need. That's the fourth need. Once we have these four needs met, then we can take this leap to self-actualization. Now, some psychologists um, disagree as to whether or not you have to get those four needs met in that particular order. Um, Depending on our personalities, we may be able to live, you know, in a very small, um, not so ideal home environment 
so long as we are feeling that we have a self-esteem. So really it depends on how the order of these, how they come and how they occur in our lives, but they all do need to be met in some capacity. And everyone's definition will be a little different as to how they meet them, but they all need to be met before we reach self-actualization. And we could stay with these four and not leap to number five. That's absolutely our choice. That's absolutely our choice. But if we choose to, there are certain things or certain ways we can make that leap. And I want to share a few of those ways you can make that leap. And I have a feeling you are doing them already. But before I get to these ways that'll help you reach self-actualization, that those ways that you can make that leap, I want to take a one minute intermission and I will see you on the other side. Welcome back. When we talk about making that leap to self-actualization, there's some really good news. The good news is that we talk about all of these um, on the blog. We've talked about them for the last three or four years and shared ideas on how to do them. And I will offer I will offer links at the end of the show notes um, to get you started. But you can always go to the archives and go to how to live the simply luxurious life. And there are scads and scads of posts on how to get to this leaping point of how to leap to self-actualization. So let's look at some of the ways you could leap. First one, simply be willing to try something new from time to time. Be willing to face your fears Travel down paths unknown, go places you've never been, see people you've never met, do things you've never done. You don't know what you'll learn. You don't know what you'll discover. You don't know what will happen. But this is when moments will occur that will teach you something about yourself, that will open doors to paths maybe you didn't know existed, but will then teach you or make you realize, oh, I really like this, or I like this element or I want to travel more down that path to discover something else because it really piqued my curiosity. Another thing you can do is simply trust your inner voice, whether it's your gut, your intuition. Anytime any voice of authority says, do this, don't do this, and it's for whatever reason it doesn't sit well with you, trust yourself and follow that path. Listen to it. Respect it. And try to figure out why it's saying what it's saying. Maybe it's going to be wrong, but there may be a reason why it's leading you down another path than what society, your group of friends, your parents, your friends are telling you to do. Trust it. Another way is to avoid putting up walls by playing games. In other words, be honest, be truthful. The only way to figure out what you really are all about, what your true potential really is, is to be honest with yourself in conversations with people you trust, but especially to yourself. Another thing you can do to make the leap is to have courage to be unpopular or be ostracized. As long as you're following your path, there may be moments when you are unpopular, when you're not understood, when people don't understand why you're doing what you're doing. But be willing to be uncomfortable or be willing to be in a situation where there's not a group of people doing the same thing. It may not happen like this all the time, but if it does, that's okay. You're making that leap that we were talking about. Another thing you could do is that regardless of your age, always be willing to tap into being a child. And what I mean by that is simply being present, being playful, and losing all track of time. Dive into those things that you love. Dive into those things that you love and enjoy doing with abandon 
And who knows what you'll discover. Maybe that is going to be something that's tied to your your life path, your true potential. Another thing is to take regular self-examination. Really become aware of your emotions. Understand, like we talked about earlier, why you feel the way you feel in certain situations, why you're uncomfortable in other situations, why your defenses go up, your hackles go up in others. You may not know in the moment why it happens if you've never addressed it, but later that night or the next day, take some time and ask yourself, why did I feel that way? What was, go- what was going on? What have I not dealt with from my past? What have I not come to terms with? Once you have those answers, you will set yourself free and be able to know how to handle that same situation when it comes up again. Because it inevitably will, because life refuses to walk away until we learn the lesson. It may approach us in different ways, but until we learn it, it will keep trying to teach us. That's a good thing. It doesn't give up on us, right? Life doesn't give up on us. I think that's a wonderful thing. Two more ways you can make a leap. Number, the next one is to take responsibility for your life. Stop blaming others and realize, okay, I'm here and I'm going to figure out how to move forward. And the last one is to understand that a good life, a contented life takes time because you have to take the time to examine, to explore. And so long as you're willing to work hard and have a good work ethic, you're going to find it. You're going to find that self-actualization. You're going to reach it. All of us are capable. All of us are capable. So this list of ways that you can make the leap will be on today's show notes, podcast 25. So you can definitely print those out and maybe just one of them will get you there. Maybe you'll do a bunch of them all the time and eventually you'll get there. Everyone will reach it at their own time. Now that's the good thing. And the thing that should give you a, a sigh of relief because just because someone else has reached it at a certain point in their life doesn't mean you will. Maybe you reached it earlier. Maybe you reached it really young. And now you're hearing all of this and you're like, oh my gosh, I was more self-actualized than I realized when I was in high school. Ha! Huh? I wasn't such an odd kid. Well, maybe you were odd in the eyes of other people. That's a good thing. I think it's a good thing to be looked at as an odd kid. Why would you want to be follower, right? But it's hard to be that outsider when you're younger. We all know that. But you know what? Pat yourself on the back now. Maybe you didn't do it then, but if you haven't done it, do it now. Everyone will become self-actualized in their own time in their own time. So now that you know what you need to do to become self-actualized, here are some things that you will enjoy or that you will recognize in yourself or that you will experience once you become self-actualized. So number one, there's 11 things here I'm going to share with you. Number one is autonomy. And what I mean by autonomy is that While you will not choose to simply live unconventionally because it's different, you may at times be living unconventionally simply because you don't agree with what society or the zeitgeist of the time believes or or tends to do uh, when it comes to how to live a certain way, all right? You may be at times doing what everyone else is doing, but as long as it's in line with how you feel your life should be lived, that's okay. The key is that you are making the choice to live the way that you are. You are not just blindly following or blindly being led by the nose simply because that's what the media says you should do. That's what your friends or family says you should do. You are choosing for yourself how to live based on your understanding of who you are and what the world is all about. That's number one. Autonomy is experienced. Number two is that you are rational. Fear is not your master. And while you will be uncertain at times of outcomes, you will approach these problems and these situations very logically. Your ability to understand that fear is simply due to unknowns is what provokes you to seek answers. And then consequently, this is also what allows you to move forward as you answer those unknowns because you will and you can and you, it will happen. Number three is that you have a sound understanding of reality. You embrace who you really are, your age, your life experiences, your abilities. You are someone who is self-actualized when you accept who you truly are. You're not, you're not settling in the sense that if you can improve, you will, but you accept where you are right now. You accept and know where and who you are right now. You also, you also accept that life has uncertainties and you still move forward knowing this confidently so. 
confidently so. You also accept the world as it is, and you accept others as they are. That's embracing reality. Number four is that you are open-minded. You understand that you are not the only person in the world and you are open to others and, and that the fact that they may live life a little differently. While you are not swayed by how they live, you accept who they are and you don't try to change them so that you can be more comfortable. So you're open-minded. You're willing to be surprised by life and not just have a fixed definition and so rigid that you will not accept anything else. Five is that you embrace and enjoy solitude and independence. In order for someone who to achieve this idea of self-actualization, you must have time, regular time to yourself. Why? Well, you need to have time with your thoughts and you need to have time to explore whatever it is that tickles your fancy, your curiosities, without fear of being judged, teased, or cajoled into doing something different simply to appease or be with other people. The self-actualized person is someone who's comfortable with their own company and needs it regularly. Everyone's doses of it will be different based on their personality. Absolutely. My time needing hours on end will be completely different from someone who just needs maybe 15 minutes a day, but you need it regularly. While they may be people who are either extroverted or introverted, and we all understand and accept and, and want social interaction in our lives, we realize that that is important. We are also aware that solitude and some privacy is also important. So they're, they understand the balance, understand the balance. Number six is that this person who becomes self-actualized is someone who becomes, or someone who has an insatiable curiosity about the world. Viewing the world with absolute fascination, you understand that the world has endless lessons to teach, beauty to reveal, and questions to pose. You delight in this. You delight in this fact, and, and thus you are open to adventure and seeing more, doing more, and therefore you are endlessly inspired and experience moments of pleasure and joy regularly. Number seven, you experience peak experiences. And I say that phrase, peak experiences, because it is a term coined by Maslow. And the definition of a peak experience is, quote, a moment of intense wonder, ecstasy, and awe, after which you are strengthened, renewed, and transformed. So someone who is self-actualized experiences these moments. And often it is such a, peak, such a moment, such a peak experience that will catapult you to this fifth level of his hierarchy. Number eight is you have a thoughtful sense of humor. You are able to enjoy humor that is lightened and never at the expense of someone else. You do not ridicule or make fun of other people in order to make yourself feel superior and someone else feel inferior. You are able to laugh at yourself and you appreciate life's many paradoxes. Number nine, guilt is not experienced. Now you may hear that one and be like, what? Wait a second. Do they have a conscience? Absolutely. A self-actualized person has a conscience. But the thing about it is, is when we think about everything we've talked about, you are in touch with your emotions, right? If you're self-actualized, you're mastered them. And since you have high ethical standards, you, you do what you know to be best at, at that time. And you never worry about what others will think because you know you're doing your best at that given moment based on the information you have. If a problem erupts or you discover your decision based on your understanding of the situation at that time was wrong, you, you're a problem solver. You rationally deal with it and you seek a solution that is within your power. You understand that someone else cannot make you feel something that you don't already feel yourself. So therefore, other people cannot make you feel guilty unless you already feel guilty for doing the wrong thing because you know it wasn't right based on your self-created values of how you're moving forward and how you have understood what, how life works. So number nine, guilt cannot be experienced because you're living your best life. You're doing your best. You're doing your best. Number 10, 
you have strong quality relationships. Rather than having innumerable friends or acquaintances, you cultivate a few friendships and relationships over time and with care. Popularity is not in your vocabulary, but rather healthy relationships in which honest communication, acceptance of strengths and flaws, and an offering of support as each party involved strives for their true potential. And the last one, number 11, is that you live in the present. Self-actualized people, they will have goals, absolutely. They're striving for their, their true potential, right? But they know they're going that path and they're still going to be able to enjoy the moment. They're still going to be able to be present, enjoy those simple everyday things that are absolutely amazing when we really slow down and think about them. When we really slow down and think about the amazing wonder of the world and how seasons change, how the world in the Northern Hemisphere is coming out of hibernation right now, and how flowers that know how to just pop out of the ground at the right time to remind us that there is a cycle to life. I mean, if we just think about those simple things, that's what a self-actualized person can do. They can revel in the simple everyday pleasures of life, everyday pleasures of life, but still, but still keep in the forefront of their mind without, without dwelling on it. I shouldn't say dwelling on it, without becoming so obsessed with it that they forget about the everyday. They can still keep their goal in mind while traveling and enjoying the everyday. That's number 11. The self-actualized life is a significant part of living a simply luxurious life. And I think as you heard these 11, these 11 definitions of someone who's self-actualized, you no doubt recognized things that we've talked about in the mission statement of Simply Luxurious Life and also in the very, very first episode of The Simple Sophisticate, those pillars, those eight pillars. With a focus on quality over quantity, following your own path and letting go of what society offers if it doesn't sit well with your journey, and an insatiable curiosity to forever continue to learn and grow. You are already well on your way to becoming and continuing being self-actualized. I have no doubt that so many of you are listening to this going, I do that. I feel that. I am doing that. I know you are. I think you're probably doing an amazing job. Keep it up. Inspire others to do the same thing. Because the joy you feel is something that it's hard to explain to people who haven't reached a certain level on this hierarchy. It's really hard. But by leading by example, people will see like the joy in your face, the content contentment you have as you go about your everyday work routines, and they'll be curious. And that curiosity will hopefully inspire them to find their own path. And again, that is... Ex- Exactly what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode today is that's one of the benefits, inspiring others. And you're leaving the world behind you a better place and continuing to improve it as you move forward. Today, I wanted more than anything to lay out the specifics so that you can map where you are and discover how you arrived where you are and determine where or what you wish to focus on as you move forward. The most wonderful part is that each of our journeys will be different. What we seek will be unique to us all. And that is what allows for there to be an endless inspiration in the world we live in. So whether you are like Irene from A Five Star Life and discover you wish to travel alone, as that is where your most contented life lies, or you know with self-reflected certainty that you would like a a partner that has similar direction in life, Give yourself the best gift you will ever bestow upon yourself and strive for self-actualization. It is oh so worth it. Thank you for tuning into today's episode. I know we got deep into psychology today, but I think it's exciting. It's exciting to see the value of investigating ourselves. And we really are. We We become a bit of a detective trying to figure out this path, this direction that we want to go. I will provide on today's show notes a few other posts that kind of tie in to what we talked about today. So be sure to check out the the blog. Um, Go to www.thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 25 to find those. And speaking of 
everyday pleasures, simple pleasures. Today's petit plaisir is a very simple thing that I enjoy and I look forward to sharing it with you. Do stay tuned and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back. So today's petit plaisir is one of my favorite teas. Now I've talked about a few other varietals earlier on in this the podcast, but today I, I want to talk about my favorite green tea. And it comes from Mirage Frere, and it is their Veux Provence tea. And they have many different green teas, so you may have already found one from Mirage Frere that you love, but I love their Veux Provence. And I tend to start my day with a green tea for the many health benefits, but it's also just really delicious. Um, and I have to tell my story of how I became a tea drinker because I was not someone who, as a child, um, saw my family or friends drinking tea. I always saw coffee and I just never really took to coffee. So I just never drank anything hot in the morning. And it wasn't until about, oh gosh, 10, maybe even seven years ago that I really dove into drinking tea and I just loved it. I was very satiating. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved the warmth, but I loved all the varietals and the benefits of it. It wasn't too much caffeine when I chose ones with caffeine. Anyway, so a few years ago when I went on one of my trips to France, I discovered uh, Mirage Frere and I'd always seen the black tin that, that they're known for and I didn't really understand what they offered. And I went to uh, one of their retail shops and also tea rooms in the Marais. And I basically just had my nose over innumerable tins, sniffing and testing and tasting and trying to figure out which ones I wanted to bring home. Because of course, I didn't know where you could get it in the United States. My suitcase, <laughs> I have to share this, my suitcase came home with, oh man, I'm so glad I had extra space because I brought home so many different tins. Little did I know that I could also ship it to my house. So I've now been starting to do that now. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Um, if you are looking for a great green tea, I highly recommend their Vert Provence. And if you are a traveler, I like to carry a few of their uh, green tea in their tea bags with me when I travel so that I can have my favorite tea on the plane or wherever I am waking up in my hotel room. Just a little bit of home, a little bit of comfort. And it's so easy to do. So today's petit pleasure is Mirage Frères Vert Provence, which is their green tea. And I highly recommend it. If you are in the United States, you can order them online at Dina DeLuca and save yourself a ton of money on shipping. If you're outside of the United States, I will provide a link to the actual Mirage Frères website. And they have tons, tons of options. Uh, Dina DeLuca has a lot of options, but not the full, full line. And with Vert Provence, you actually can't get the black tin for Vert Provence. You can for other varietals, but not for this one right now. So if you want the tin, I recommend you go to the actual uh, website of Mirage Frere. So enjoy in the morning, enjoy whenever you like tea. But again, I will provide a link for all the benefits of being a tea drinker because there are many on today's show notes, www.thesimplyandluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 25. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Pleasure, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or from time to time, introduce you to an expert who offers insight into how to live simply luxuriously. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. <music> Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour. Bonjour.